got to the story Morning Glory was nine years old when I was born. If you were to release one track from the album tomorrow, which one do you think would resonate the most with the youth of today? In the current times which we live in, I would say some might say, uh, as some might say, is a kind of a song that's searching for the sunshine through the rain clouds. Not that it's raining, but you know the way the world is today, it's pretty fucking grim. We will find a brighter day, all that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm going to say, final answer, some might say. Hey Noel, my name is Grant. And so my question is, when the album first came out, it wasn't as highly praised by the critics as it is now. So what I was wondering was, what was it like dealing with that sort of feedback, knowing that you had created this masterpiece? Was it disheartening or did you not really care and you just went on with whatever you were doing? Thanks for all the music over the years. Hope you're doing well. Oh, what a nice boy. Well, Grant. Uh, when it came out, it was not received well at all in England. I'm not sure what it was like in America. But uh, the British press were a bit underwhelmed by it. I was all right with that because I've never really... Uh, every album that we ever made and subsequently that I've ever made, I knew what, I kind of know what the reaction's going to be. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think... I didn't think people initially would 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 be. I mean, Wonderwall is a, Wonderwall is a difficult. It's a difficult song for people to accept. Coming off of definitely maybe, but I wasn't that bothered. Bad reviews or lukewarm reviews are the same as uh, great reviews. You just don't take them seriously. You've got to know what it is you've done, and be happy with it. It doesn't really matter what other people say because, particularly journalists. Because uh, in the end, the people will decide. So, there you go. Hello, hi guys. I would like to know what was the biggest difficulty you faced when you creating the What's the Story Morning Glory? Kisses. Love you. Oh. Um, I guess the biggest difficulty was the fact that nobody had heard the songs by the time we set up in the studio. Not only had nobody heard uh, any of the songs, I hadn't finished writing half of them. But it didn't seem to be a problem. I guess not having the material written and having to trust your own instinct that these couple of chords and this little phrase that I've got and this little arrangement is going to work when the band start playing it. And lo and behold, it did. So there, keeping Owen Morris sober, keeping Liam and Bonehead out of the pub, were pretty difficult. But um, apart from that, it was a bit of a breeze, I've got to say. Hello, Noel. I'm Morihiro Oishi in Tokyo, Japan. My question is, uh, after the 25 years of releasing What's the Story, Morning Growly, what did you miss about that Britpop glory days? I'm sure that Supernova Heights was such a great place to live, but I'd like to hear what you're feeling right now about those days. Thank you and take care. Those days were great to live through, but I wouldn't like to go back and live through them because I'm... You do it once and they were great and you can only do it when you're young. Oasis was going like that at a very, very fucking fast speed and you were hanging on for dear life sometimes. And I missed the, I missed the, I missed the not knowing of what the next day would bring. Whereas now, in later life, everything is quite calm and, you know, everything is a bit more mapped out. The chaos and the excitement of the gigs, pretty fucking special. But, you know, it's not something that I look back and, and wish I could do, because frankly, one phone call and I could do it, you know. But um, I did it once when I was a young man, and I think it's best to leave it there. Hi, Noel. 
Um, I don't know if you recognize me, but we did meet outside of a supermarket in New York City around two years ago, but I won't take it personally if you don't remember. So, my question is, in the past you've said that some might say it's the archetypal Oasis song and that it's emblematic of the band's spirit. What do you think it is about Oasis' spirit that some might say captures? All right, thank you. Bye-bye. I actually don't remember meeting you outside the supermarket in New York, and for the life of me, I can't think why. I think that some might say uh, sums up Oasis in the sense that it's an all-inclusive, uplifting, slightly nonsensical, swaggering rock and roll tune, which uh, between that and Supersonic would be my favourite ever Oasis songs before anyone else asks. And it was our first number one, and it will always have a special place in, uh, in history. Oh,